Good morning, everyone. Can I begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet, those of the Kulin Nations, and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. To say a special thank you to Nellie Thomas for um, being our MC today and hosting. And um, the great thing about having Nellie here is this not only is she very committed, um, but she's also very bloody funny and it will make your day so much easier <laughs> uh, listening to her and having her here. Um, to Emily Maguire and the panellists that are all here today, um, I want to say thank you for giving your time to the sector and all of the work that you do in family violence prevention. While we know we've come a long way, we still have a long way to go. And sadly, we know this still, as one in four Australian women have experienced sexual or physical violence from a partner or a former partner. And one woman is killed on average each week at the hands of their current partner or former partner. And only two weeks ago, um, I attended the Vicky Cleary Memorial um, VFL match over in Coburg. Uh, Vicky was murdered by her ex-partner outside her workplace when she was just 25 years old. We join the families of other victims of family violence to celebrate their lives and the strength of the women and children for whom family violence is still a reality. It's for these women and children that we continue the important work and can I acknowledge each and every one of them uh, in our uh, thoughts here today. And thank you for helping us in the journey to end family violence. I'm very proud to be part of a government, the Andrews Labor government, um, in committing to trying to end family violence and to committing to the 227 recommendations that came from the Family Violence Royal Commission. Our government has committed an unprecedented spend uh, over the last few years to try and prevent family violence and to also provide the services that are needed for women and children to flee the situation of family violence. And that has involved committing $50.8 million last year and an additional 24 million this year to roll out our free from violence primary prevention strategy, which has been central uh, to this government's work in committing to respect and equality in all forms for all Victorians. We're funding local government women's health organisations and other community organisations to develop their own localised prevention programs. We know that we have the best success when the programs are relevant to local communities and are diverse. We're working with school communities and networks like Partners in Prevention to promote respectful relationship programs and to create intergenerational change that we want to see. We're also delivering a statewide advertising campaign to change the behaviours that drive family violence. This campaign calls on men to respect women by calling out sexism, harassment and abuse of their peers, in their peers. These activities focus on stopping violence before it occurs and by working in settings where inequality, violent behaviour are shaped. And I've got to say, standing on the field at the VFL game just two weeks ago in Coburg, um, with po possibly the blokiest bloke um, audience, uh, many, many men there in the stands there to watch Coburg versus Collingwood on a Saturday, to, um, to see them completely get this campaign um, and to actually stand on their feet and give a standing ovation to Phil Cleary at the end of his speech when he challenged all the men um, that were there at that game that day to take the challenge and step up and call it out. And to see the response um, from the community was um, very overwhelming and it actually uh, filled me with optimism that ch real change is underway. So as we know, Victoria is a leader in primary uh, prevention of family violence and all violence uh, against women. And this is due to no small part to organisations like Domestic Violence Resource Centre here in Victoria. DVRCV has been involved in primary prevention work since the early 2000s, as the Victorian evidence base is still emerging and leading the rest of Australia. Their flagship 
Prevention Programs Partners in Prevention was first funded back in 2007. And since then, the program has grown significantly now and now has a statewide reach of over 1,000 members. In this way, DVRCV is a critical touch point for the primary prevention workforce. Building the capacity of prevention practitioners is an integral part of this government's 10-year industry plan for family violence prevention. And this morning, I'm really pleased to be able to announce $448,000 in funding to DVRVC to support the learning and development needs of primary prevention workforce. So with this funding, DVRCV will develop and implement an induction program for new workers entering the prevention sector, training for new and existing supervisors of, the prevention of, uh, of prevention workers, resources and tools to support primary prevention trainers, and of course, uh, continu continuing the rollout of um, what is this government's, I think, keystone commitment to women, and that is our safe and strong gender equity uh, strategy. I'm also pleased to announce funding to another primary prevention leader, and that is Our Watch. We're investing 404,000 in Our Watch to build the primary prevention capacity in the LGBTI community, Aboriginal communities, and elder uh, family violence sectors. And we know with this funding that Our Watch will continue to build relationships with organisations in each of these areas to increase. Uh, prevention literacy and to deliver training. With this funding, we are investing in the expert leadership of DVRCV and Our Watch to develop our prevention workforce. Together we can create a future free from violence. I want to thank you again for your time and commitment in the sector, for being here today, and to thank you in joining DVRCV in this important conversation. I hope that the day brings new insights for your important work. And as Minister for the Prevention of Family Violence and Minister for Women, I look forward to working with you as practitioners into the future and to seeing your workforce grow in its capacity. Thank you.